This week, we talk about what time of day is best to train. Also, we'll take the mystery out of rowing and check in to see how many compliments I got this week. Let's get into it. This just in. This just in. I've reached the glorious stage in my hair farming that I can put it in a ponytail. Oh, look at you. Isn't this cool? Jeez. This is a milestone. A happy yeah, milestone. Some cute little I, ribbon in it yet. I could I could have went man bun like six months ago, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I can't do it yet. <laughs> I'm trying. And my daughter was like, I want to put it in a man bun. I'm like, nope. Oh. We're just going with the Ted Nugent ponytail. That's the best I can just do. Just let her. You got to let her paint your nails too. <laughs> oh, I w- I'd let her do that before I do the man bun. <laughs> Oh, shit. All right. Well, uh, we're going to. I was thinking about because I always do my workouts at a certain time of day, and you're always telling me when you do yours. So we're going to get into is there a better time of day? What's the best time of day to train? That's like asking what, okay. the, what is the best diet? Yeah. This is all subjective. Depends. It's all opinion, but we're going to talk through it, right? Yep. So before we get into that, though, I have this tweet from the awesome Ken Berry MD, who's kind of a carnivore, low carb um, doctor. And he posted this study uh, and and his takeaway is stop worrying about how much you eat, focus 100% 100 on what you eat. And then he posted a link to this study. It was kind of interesting because um, what they did was they overfed everyone for 21 days, I think. Uh, I think it was 5,800 calories per day, which is a lot, right? What it, was it epidemiological? Uh, I'm not sure. Did they allow? Was well, it like whether was self-reported, it self-reported or not? I don't yeah. know. I'm not sure about that. But, what, what he, but uh, here's the takeaway. Okay. The study rep- reports a case, uh, this study reports a case study of an individual who ate 5,800 calories per day of three different diets for 21 days at a time. That's me. The three different diets were low-carb, low-fat, or low carb was one, low fat was two, and very low fat vegan was three. The weight gain over 21 days was 1.3 kilograms for the low carb, 7.1 kilograms for low fat, and 4.7 kilograms for the very low fat vegan. So the the interesting thing about this was it was the same calories per day. So uh, kind of goes back to that the quality, you know, of the calories that so, you're putting in a calories not a calorie. So many questions, right? Were all th- Three individuals. I think this uh, might be one the, person. Oh, this might be one person who tried this th- three different ways. Oh, because it says an an individual who ate fifty eight hundred calories per day for twenty one days at a time. So he did each one for twenty one days. Uh, the 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 uh, so the dog, one study. The dogmatic polarized are going to say, <laughs> "Well, that's just that person, right?" Is he uniquely wired to process calories differently? I don't know. Well, and it depends. What was the individual's? Maybe it says it in there, but what was that individual's diet before the study? Dewey, I don't read these things. Oh, yeah. So you're like you're lucky. You're lucky. I read the summary. So you're like everyone on Facebook that shares a fucking article. (laughs) You're lucky I read the summary. Mostly, usually it's just the headline. The fact that I'm into the summary that was deep, a deep dive. That's my favorite (laughs) go-to. Comment on Facebook now. You didn't even read the article, did you? Oh. <laughs> it's so bad. You know, I want to know. There's got to be an eye tracking software. I've seen this before in photography competitions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They show how a photographer interprets an image versus a regular Joe. Sure. And the photographer's like all over, like scoping every little thing. Yeah. And your average Joe just kind of looks at it and looks away. And they, they had developed an eye tracking software. So I would love to see a study of, well, this is a, another study. This is one I would read. If they showed a bunch of scientific articles or political articles or whatever, how many people just read the headline versus read the first paragraph 98%, versus read the thing? 98%. Just go for the headline. Just the headline. <laughs> and then if they, if they, and if they achieve confirmation bias, they click like. Well, that's the thing. If the headline agrees with you, you're like, hmm, I think, I think I might know, need to know more. And if it's, if you disagree, you go, ah, that's bullshit. On to the next oh. thing. <laughs> Yeah. Or, <laughs> so or I've seen people go, well, that's where people get catfished into going, hell yeah, to like a Babylon Bee or, a, <laughs> oh, right. or they an do, onion. Yeah, they fall for the complete onion one because yep. they run it to be true so bad. Yep. So, yeah, well, so I haven't read this, but I'll post the uh, 
a postal link. So if you're one who does read these things, you can check it out for yourself. <laughs> okay, it says the subject was a Caucasian male, 29 years old. Well, each diet, that's, yep, for, throw it out. White privilege again. Yep, white privilege, white guy. Throw it out. Each, <laughs> each diet was followed over a 21-day period, and the target caloric intake was 5,800 kilocalories. The diet periods were separated by a three month washout and returned to baseline period. Okay. Oh. The, the order of the. So he did one and then he waited three months and then did the other one for 21 days. But what did the washout diet consist of? Well, true. Yeah. Baseline. Yeah. Who, who knows what his baseline Sad, was? Sad, probably. Probably. Um, so low carb, this is kind of interesting, was fish, eggs, steak, green beans, and nuts. Okay. So it kind of goes through and, de- well, it's pretty detailed about what he ate. Yeah, but I can, I can. I can solve the weight loss in one sentence. Let's hear it. He lost water when he was low carb. Oh, yeah. That's the difference between the three. Yep. I would agree with that. Okay, and here for the low fat, it said breakfast cereal. Ooh. (laughs) Now, see, why would you go for breakfast cereal for low fat instead of, like, fish or something? You know what I mean? Breakfast cereal, skim milk, Tastes mini pizza, better. 0% fat yogurt. Who spells yogurt with an H, by the way? Wholemeal bread. This has got to be from no, somewhere far away. No, that's when I would stop reading. <laughs> Wholemeal bread, chicken, reduced rice, fat pudding, Coke, lasagna, garlic bread, and chocolate. Okay, so it was low fat, but it was tons of sugar tons of sugar and carbs, so no wonder he didn't lose as much. But if you did low fat, low, low fat diet of tuna... And, or you know, or, or and not only is that high, that low fat diet, it's super inflammatory. Yeah, that's that's just a bad diet all the way around. So that's not a what a low fat diet proponent would prescribe. Right. right. You know, if you're going for the Ted Naiman approach, you know, stick Dude, to facts. The high protein, low fat. That's you know, that would have been interesting if we would have tried the PE, the Ted Naiman approach. But Every, that would have been the, the superior one. Everyone should do PE. Um, okay, and then the very low-fat vegan diet, porridge, porridge. <laughs> soya milk, <laughs> banana, various beans, olive oil, potato, rice, tofu, avocado, apples, mandarins, and pineapple. Wow, okay. Porridge. So it just goes to Goldilocks show Goldilocks wrote that. Yeah, right? Even, even amongst these kind of specific diets, there's still so much variance because a low-fat diet consisting of fish – mainly versus breakfast cereal and right. Coke. I mean, come on. That is kind of insane. Was it, they made Coca-Cola or? I think so. <laughs> well, well, he would have lost more if he was on straight up cocaine. Right. Wow. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah. So, you know, something to think about, uh, but just another. But so, so how does he get to the conclusion of his tweet? I think he read the headline. <laughs> 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 <Ba-dum, boom. laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, because I mean, if yeah, if you just read the headline, and you say these three diets, this one lost the most weight. Boom, mm-hmm. bias confirmed. Yep. <laughs> What's well, it's, it's even in the little snapshot. When you dig deeper, you go, "Well, he was eat, eating freaking Coke <laughs> breakfast cereal." Well, <laughs> right. One of them, duh. He's pouring cherry Coke in his cornflake. <laughs> yeah, fifty eight hundred calories of of yeah cherry Coke on porridge. I mean, come right. on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, anyways, but Ken Berry is a great follow. He's a very reasonable guy. He does Facebook or YouTube lives like once a week. I yeah, think, he does. I think he Q&As. does. Good. He's a smart guy. Yeah, he gets a little. Guy. He gets a little dogmatic. Yeah, he's very. He's he's full on. You know, into the carnivore side of things. Um, so Some just go these, in knowing that if you listen to him. I'm, I I I think I said this last week, but it bears repeating. I'm starting to feel the dogma is just as strong in the carnivore as it is the vegan now. I think it is, except for, I. As a mostly carnivore, I never would tell a vegan, you know, you're fucking it up, dude. Or, you know, I don't try to evangelize. Push it. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the difference. You're not, you're not calling them murderers and exactly. throwing red paint Because there's under. not the moral component. Right. You know, so I, it's just a – and just – so I think people are – believe in it maybe too much or they, they uh, you know, they think it's like fair the enough. cure-all, yep. you know. Because – that, and the people are guilty of that. And I think a lot of that is because it's new. Because really carnivore diet was was only a thing in the last two, three years as far as kind of being main, sort of mainstream. Before that, it was Atkins and stuff, but that wasn't pure carnivore. So I think when people are new to it, they latch on and they're like, 
fully committed. It's and part of the shock value too. Have you? I'd like to see a reaction video on YouTube of people reacting to hearing a, what carnivore is for the first time. Yeah, I well, I for me it was like only two years ago, and I remember seeing Sean Baker on Rogan, mm-hmm. right? And I was like, well, wait a minute, wait, nothing the, but. I eat nothing just, but ribeyes. Just meat? Ribeyes all day long. Just, wow. Ribeyes and occasional eggs. And I loved meat and was not afraid of meat at all. But even I was like, what? That sounds insane. Well, it's if you did a reaction video to people who have <laughs> never heard of carnivore diet, yeah. every single reaction would be, what about your cholesterol? Right. Everyone. How come we're not going to drop dead of a right. heart attack? Right. And that's where Ken Berry's good. He really just calmly... Debunks of those myths, yeah, the cholesterol yeah. stuff, the statin stuff. Are you going to have that's a heart where, attack? And that's where I think Saladino loses people is because he gets too wound up. Yeah. Yeah. Ken Berry maintains his mm-hmm. uh, his reasonable, calm nature. So he's a really good follow if if you don't like your stuff served up with, with a side of snark. You know, he's pretty pretty uh, reasonable guy. I'm hoping I can <laughs> fo- start following Pal- Saladino again pretty soon. <laughs> I, st- I still unfollow You're him. just going to have to wait till COVID's over. Which is never, by the way. I just, I can't do it. It's, it's, he went from Dr. Carnivore to Dr. COVID. And it's right. just, whatever. Do your thing, dude, but I don't want to. Well, that's, that's your right to unfollow. That's how it works, bro. Right. All right. I saw this story and this made me chuckle, okay? Because we, we had your Minnesota State Fair here. And this, uh, this art news article came in our local paper. It says, Minnesota State Fair creates a mix of emotions among the vegan community. First of all, why is this news? Um, Slow but it day. It made me chuckle. So it says, they've come a long way in the last couple of years. It used to be pretty slim pickings if you didn't eat meat, said Mary, a vegan of St. Paul. The vegan food additions sparked several conversations among the vegan community about the ethics of going to the state fair which showcases animal agriculture when living a vegan lifestyle. So they're, they're, I guess they're conflicted because if you go there and you see all the ag things, mm-hmm. it's all animals you know are going to end up being food. <laughs> so the, they're traumatized by that, I guess. But I think if you're a vegan and you're traumatized by the morality of it all, how can you ever go out in public? Because well, all you're going to do is see leather right, everywhere. right. You know, you're going to see products either made out of cow, cows or pigs or food made out of it literally everywhere. You can't walk down a block yeah. without being confronted with animal death. So I don't know why the state fair is any, any different if they can't even go down their block without being confronted by it. So Well, they want to they be, be blindfolded up to the, <laughs> the deep fried Snickers. Up to the vegan Snickers. Right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so... I guess they're happy because it has more vegan items. But, you know, for every vegan booth, there's five, like, foot-long corn dog booths, too. So they, you know, it's not like they're uh, avoiding the This is when it pays meat. to not always just poach articles from the AP. <laughs> Talking to you for them. <laughs> you don't think, well, yeah, I don't know. If I assume were. that's where they stole it from. Yeah, I don't know. Probably. I, I mean, at least they, this one's from the from the you know the state we're in. Yeah, but the forum didn't send some oh, no. intern down to the state fair oh, to interview not. people. Definitely not. Um, they barely have enough money to pay for the rights to use it. Probably. Well, yeah, they don't. Sadly, I don't know one person that pays for an article. <laughs> nope. My grandma. My grandma subscribes. I think she does. She's ninety six though. <laughs> one of her things <laughs> leave her alone yep i'm like every time someone forwards me an article and i'm like oh that looks interesting click on it <laughs> paywall i'm like nope i'm out and then i reply back to that person cliff notes dude i ain't paying to read it yeah article. or find it on valley news live where right you read it. <laughs> right yeah. find it anywhere it's an ap story and you're gonna make me pay for it <laughs> right yeah just go to google news um so Okay, so, so here's this vegan quoting. It says, I don't know that I can say I've fully reconciled with it myself just just because I know that my money is supporting things I don't agree with. Well, said every taxpayer, by the way. Right, <laughs> right. No <laughs> shit. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, you're gonna have, if you're going to worry about where every dollar <laughs> you're, you're paying in taxes goes, oh, you're going to have a pretty miserable life. I mean, that goes for literally, literally everyone. <laughs> Wow. If I can help promote the vegan items that are there, knowing that people who are sharing those posts are really interested in it, then I know in the end there are animals being saved because of what I'm doing. Uh, 
sounds well, like when virtue, I, virtue when, signaling. And Sorry. also lying to your, it's called lying to yourself because when I was oh, yeah. there, my son literally ate two feet of corn dog <laughs> and his, right. and his cousins twice as much as that. And I had to go back to the ATM like three times Oof. because, because I was, I had my son and, and his two cousins with, and between going on rides and trying to fill them up with various meats. Uh, yeah, I was, I just about went broke. Oof, done. So I think we, uh, whatever good she allegedly did, we counteracted that. We were, we were feet away from there visiting the University of Minnesota. Oh, right. At, the, at the state fair. Yeah. Because on the backside of the right. fairgrounds. It's that a massive freaking place. Oh, it's huge. I haven't but, been uh, since I was in my 20s. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, so there you go. Vegans are upset that there's not all vegan options, but they're happy that there's more, but they're sad that there's animal agriculture on display. Well, Some, I don't know what to tell you. Someday. So that's that. Someday they will rid the world of evil meat. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, you know, we always talk about carnivore Aurelius. Yes. Well, I saw this post by great Greek philosopher, Assholius. <laughs> I know that guy. <laughs> that guy's smart as shit. <laughs> so, yeah, great Greek philosopher, As- Assholius, otherwise known as Dewey, put, the, put this on his actually, Facebook the other actually, day. Actually, Mel made a, <laughs> Mel made a, a copy and paint, whatever, Photoshop of like a, Greek philosopher, and then put my face on it and <laughs> called it full of shit of <laughs> That's good. I like that. She'll have to send me that. So you posted this on on uh, your Facebook, and I thought it was pretty. It's one of, like you said, Hard Truth Wednesday, right? It's one of these uncomfortable things. And it people fool themselves into thinking they're active and not sedentary. Because I'm not laying on the couch, I'm not sedentary. Exactly. And so just to read it for the audio listeners, Hard Truth Wednesday, walking a little, playing rec softball slash golf, and doing yard work a few days a week is still a sedentary lifestyle. Ouch. I don't I don't see it as an ouch. That hurt, well that I, I even I, for me I read that and I go, wow, damn, that that sucks because I'm sure most people that aren't actively lifting weights and, you know, exercising in the traditional sense, if they're doing this, they're going, well, got that covered. Yeah, but they don't. They're right. being lied to. I'm telling them the truth. I'm not the ouch guy. I'm <laughs> the one being ouch, honest with you. to hear it. We're not saying, right. not saying you're being unnecessarily hardcore. I mean, it just hurts to realize, come to that realization, to think that you were, well, I'm an active person just because you're not on a rascal. Right, and somebody, know, or a, a friend of mine- a friend of mine posted, Nels posted underneath there and made the comment. He summed it up too. And he said, yes, you, there is a mild amount of uncomfortableness that's mm-hmm. going to have to accompany your workout regimen. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to get uncomfortable once in a while. Oh, yeah. And by uncomfortable, I mean this, I can't fucking wait for this to be over. Yeah, nobody's- Like, no, that's uncomfortable. Nobody's getting, you know, so, domes as we covered last week from pushing the lawnmower. Right. You know, you're that that goes towards your steps, <laughs> right? And it's but yeah. treat that stuff not as your exercise routine, but just bonus, or not even that, just baseline life, right? <laughs> just living life. Yeah, I mean, just mowing your lawn is not exercise. Although I, you know, here's a, here's what I'll piggyback on this, and if people can realize this, I'll even go one step further. I bet there's people in here that have riding lawnmowers and still think they're not sedentary. For sure. It's like, dude, you're sitting on the rider. Yep, no, but they climbed around and they got a turn. It's bouncy. <laughs> it's bouncy. Oh, well, that's got to count for something. Get my steps in. Right. As you're bouncing. Right. And you the reach lawn. down on that, and that's got a can cooler, right? Or yeah. hold a can holder right, right here and reaching up for that bush light. Your, your bowl, your bowl of cereal with Coke on it. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, what I, would, what I would say is, you know, just as a rule, whenever you have a choice, like, we're flipping a house right now, one of, one of our one of the many jobs I do. And it came with a riding mower mm. in the garage, but I hauled my mower, my push mower from my house to this house just so I wouldn't take that oh, option. Oh, right, right, right. So like I think in you know, like you've heard of the people that I say I always park in the back of the lot. Right. So you walk far, you know. For sure. Yeah, that kind of stuff. I mean Yep. But when I understand that that's all that's doing is raising your baseline a smidge. 
Right. That's not. It's not really. You're not going to get jacked by parking at the back of the lot. And and the argument, I heard, the best I heard a long time ago was the argument, the counter argument to what I just said there is, but it's still better than nothing. True. But it's mar- true. Marginally. Yeah. It's marginally. So the best answer I got, I heard on a podcast one time, is it was a gal, and the dude says, "Yeah, but but Melissa or whatever her name was, you're not listening. If if Aunt Sally's getting up and doing something, it's better than her just sitting on the couch." And then the the female interviewee goes, "Barely, right? If, it's barely more." If David Goggins is a ten, you know, like. Right. Running ex- extra ultra, what do they call those? Ultra, ultra marathon. Super duper Every Saturday. Marathon, right? 100 miles every Saturday for if fun. He, if he's a 10 and person who rides a rascal and watches Netflix all day is a zero, you're, I mean, you're, you're like a, a three or something. Two and a half. Yeah. You're not closer to Goggins just because you push mode. Right. And you you know. That's just, just chores. Right. Doing laundry doesn't count as exercise. It counts as activity. Yes. It's better than the rascal and Netflix all day. Right. But it's you're not Goggins Jr. Right. Just because you push the mower instead and, of choosing the rider. You don't rider. need to be the ten, Goggins at 10. No. You need to be yourself at like 6 or 7. Yep. But you need to be, but it's an RPE, it's a relative perceived exertion. Right. So it's what is a 6 or 7 or an 8 to you. Right. And once in a while you need to bump up against 10. Oh yeah. So you're yeah. just like you're not going to get that progressive overload. I hit 10. I hit 10 last week because I knew I was going to go to the cities and eat some shit. And <laughs> and I did. But I hit 10 last week and thought I was going to get to see my mom again. It was bad. <laughs> it was bad. I was, I was thinking. What, so, what so, specific exercise were you doing? A whole bunch of them. Okay. It was like four to Cir- A circuit thing? Yep. And then I went so hard that shit started going like this. Oh, started shit. going, started turning black. Wow! And then once I got the fade to black to stop, and then it started getting all crossed and blurry. Like I was opening my eyes underwater. <laughs> wow! <laughs> my heart rate was like one eighty six. <laughs> but I do that like maybe once a week. Right. That hard. Yeah. But yeah. The, the the CrossFit saying is you'll pass out before you die. Don't worry. Yeah. Exactly. You can't go too hard. Right. Yeah, I mean, unless you're literally injuring yourself by yanking something so hard. Self-preservation yeah. will stop you. Unless you're a, unless you're an elite CrossFit athlete at the CrossFit Games, because they possess that gene That's where they, don't, it. they don't shut it off. Yeah, no, yeah. They could kill themselves. But Sally, It's like those MMA guys that would let their arm get broke before they for tap, the tap out. out. Yes, yeah. exactly. Right. Um, the one year that one gal did Murph, and she's like, she's dying. It's like a hundred degrees on the on the floor in this soccer stadium. And for folks who don't know, Murph is that hero wad for Lieutenant Michael Murphy. It's uh, run one mile, do one hundred push ups, two hundred pull ups, three hundred air squats, and then run another mile with a twenty pound vest on. Yeah, that was winning. And hundred and ten degrees, <laughs> right? No water, right? Right. That's crazy. And they're there just <clears throat> dropping like flies, and they're oh, and like people are like coming to, and they're, they're like, don't touch me because if they you could help. You'd then be you're cute. Out. Yep. Yeah. And at the CrossFit Games, there might be 15 events from Thursday to Sunday. One event, you're done. Pack <laughs> right. your bag. Yeah. You right. don't just go, oh, I'll, I'll <laughs> yeah. do better on the next event. <laughs> right. Nope. If you DQ, you're out. Yep. <clears throat> That's insane. So they'd rather die. But mm-hmm. guess what? You, me, and Sally, that this post was intended for, we don't possess that. We don't have to worry about it. Right. Nope. So just, you know, be. Be honest with yourself as far as your level of exertion. And if you're not pushing yourself, you're not going to grow. Another tip that I tell people Mm -hmm. is if your ensuing workout doesn't scare the shit out of you, it's not hard enough. (laughs) Like if you don't have butterflies and like the nervous peas. Right. Because you're scared of what's about to happen. Wow. Then it's not hard enough. Okay. You mean like just wait? That you're trying to push or, or you're talking more of a circuit, like CrossFit type stuff, but. High intensity training. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And how about like just anabolic. weightlifting though? I don't think weightlifting would ever scare you. It because I think that's more you about, can, you know, where's failure at? Can it, what, where's the. Yeah. The Your weight muscle just you fails and you drop it yeah. and you get a little burn and big deal. But yeah. I'm talking lungs, like you're 
trapped underwater. Yep. Um, you just can't find that breath because it's gone. You're just flushed full of lactic acid, <laughs> and you just can't go on, and you're thinking you might die. <laughs> and I have a lot of exercise. I have a lot of workouts where at least two to three times a week that I do CrossFit, and I, I go on the app, and I see the programming for that workout for the day. And I'm scared the rest of the day. You literally go, oh, I'm crap. Like, this is going to hurt so much. <laughs> and I turn to people like in the lane next to me at class. I'll be like, this is going to hurt so bad. <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> Does everyone f typically have the same? Well, there's like a lot of girls. I do it once in a while too. It's not just gender specific, but once in a while I'll be like, time, go, don't start the clock. I got to pee. Because you get the nervous oh, pees. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. Crazy. Because you know how bad it's going to hurt. But go you, hard. You go have hard. to. You have to get uncomfortable like that. Like Greg Doucette always says, "Go harder than last time." Right. That's how you grow. All right. Well, we're going to take the mystery out of this. Is a topic um, rowing machine even says CrossFitter in the subject or in the first paragraph. This is a a topic that's pretty dear to me. I, so I, rowing. I, it's funny. I take rowing it, technique. It mentions quasi row, serious. It mentions CrossFit, like you said. That uh, if you've done CrossFit, you've probably experienced a rower because not a lot of other people even use rowers, really. You know what else <laughs> that people who don't CrossFit mm -hmm. and aren't avid rowers, we row every week, probably two to three times a week. Right. It's a staple. Yeah. Not every rower is the same. Oh, so no. it's like, hey, what's your 500 meter time? That's the that's the benchmark. Right. That's the, like, that's your mile time or. Yep. Um, but I suppose depending on the model, it could vary. Those swoosh water rowers at uh, Orange Theory. Oh yeah, so much easier. Really? Oh yeah, because they they typically use the Concept Two. Is that? Yep. The kind that's the st industry standard for CrossFit. It's the Olympic. <clears throat> it's the one the Olympic rowers try on. Okay. Yeah. So there's kind of a gold standard for that. But reason I wanted to talk about it was because I think a lot of people do it wrong and that they don't know. There's a huge technique. They don't know how to what the metrics are too. And that's what confused me. Yes. Okay. Because I was like, is it, I'm going to row for, cause I, I bought a cheap one off Amazon, got oh, in the house. Okay. So I'm going to try, you know, just throwing it into my routine just to get some cardio, even though I hate cardio. If you go to the concept to rowing, uh, there's a chart where you should be for your okay. 500 meter time. So you test okay. the 500. So, but, but then it, it made me think, do I, cause you know, normally it was when I was doing treadmill, I'd be like, oh, I'll do treadmill for half hour. Okay. So do I row for, a set amount of time. Do intervals. Well, hang on. Yeah. Or do I say I'm going to row for X amount of meters? Distance. Yeah. Or do I say I'm going to burn X amount of calories? Forget that last one. Okay. That's stupid. <laughs> Worry about calories and food, not calories and exercise. <laughs> well, but I mean, so that's what I'm saying though, is that I didn't know. And calories, that's another misnomer. Calories on that monitor, that's the c calories in the terms of energy output that the machine is putting out, not you. Right. People are like, oh, I burned 1,100 calories. No, mm -hmm. you didn't. Oh, they completely do that. They go, Snickers, 100 calories. Okay, I got to hit 100 on the rower. What? On the rower. See, the that's Snickers. the shitty part is on the rower, <laughs> it's the machine and it's the units of energy that you're producing. From the machine, not the amount not of burning. energy you're burning in your body, but it is on the treadmill. It's not oh, that okay. accurate, but on yeah. the treadmill, those okay. calories are actually your calories. If you enter your body weight, your height, blah, blah, blah. So that's what kind of sparked the whole discussion in my mind was what are these metrics? What's a good standard? Because, okay, when I'm doing chin ups, it's like I'm trying to get one more every time, right? Yeah. I'm trying and to you raise found my number. that. You found that scale. Yep. And like I found where, where, I should fit, be. where I fit to be average versus elite and all that. Um, so, for rowing, I didn't know where to start. So that I knew you would have an opinion because you do it every week. Right. So um brought up this article here, the ultimate guide to the rowing machine workout. <laughs> I mentioned the house of cards because Frank, Frank. Oh, he is always him. rowing. <laughs> it's funny because my dad had you know a who else rower is? way back in the day too. You know who else is? Who's that? Jim Halpert on the um Oh uh as Office? No, yeah. But as uh, Jack Ryan? Yes. Oh, okay. He's always yep. rowing. In the, what's that show? Uh, it's one of my favorites, too. Yeah, Shadow Recruit or something. Oh, no, it's just Jack know. Ryan. Is it? Oh, okay, just Jack yep. Ryan, yeah, on Amazon. Yep. <clears throat> well, I think the reason 
rowing is so effective. It says here, it's a full body training technique. And it's, you know, builds aerobic endurance and muscular strength at the same time. I think that's why it's so popular in the CrossFit circles, because you're really just getting total body. working the whole thing. Yep. Um, so they talked about uh, the proper technique. Okay, so I'll read this and see if you agree or have anything to add here. Um, and he talks about Olympic rowers, so guys that actually row real boats. You know, that's kind of how they're this movement, what this movement is based on was for training them. Right. But then I think they realized it was such a good overall workout that it translated to other other sports and just functional fitness in general. So basically what they say is the catch is the beginning of the stroke. Here you're at full compression forward and taking the weight of the stroke. If you were an actual rowing boat, you could visualize the blade entering the water and catching the weight of its resistance. So that's kind of when you're fully extended with your arms and you're grabbing and it's starting to uh, pull back. Okay, mm -hmm. then it says the first step is to drive legs first, then back, and finally arms. Is arms, that... arm, the arms is just the flick just to finish the movement. Okay, so you're saying it's, it's not even really a no, you're, bicep you're, thing at all. Like him there, your arms are locked the entire way back. Okay. And then right at the end, you pull. Okay, so you're not, because I bet you've seen this a lot. People sit down, they just start yanking, yep, right? Yep, They're all arms. Yep. Yeah. That's the instinct. Right. Because people, look, you're strapped in. That's just a place to hold your feet. No. Yep. So the easiest thing that anyone can do to immediately figure out the tr correct row technique it's the exact same as a deadlift. Okay. Yeah, it's funny that you say that because he mentions here that it's kind of like a clean or something. Or a, a clean too because yeah. the bar would come up to your chest and yep. clean. Yep. But it's th picture picking up the bar off the ground. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't go like this. Right. You'd use your legs first. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yep. Okay. But there's so <laughs> many different things too. I don't know if he gets into it, but like when you're doing that catch position and your knees are bent, yep. the timing is – to straighten and then the bar comes or then the handle comes over your legs. Cause a lot of people you'll see them oh, in the gym. Legs flat like, out. And then the, no. Then. Yes. Because a lot of people will like go like that with the handle over their knee. And knee it's tops. just a waste of energy. Right. True. So that's yeah, your Cause cue. you don't want to, you don't want to vary from that plane of straight. Right. Okay. Cause if you went like this in the yep. water. Yeah. That's a complete waste. The yeah, oars cause, are. Because why would you dunk the oars five, right. six inches deep? Right, yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah. That makes sense. So what he says here is, I always liken the movement to a power clean. Sure. And stress the importance of holding a strong body And what's body the first ankle. half of a power clean? A deadlift, deadlift, yeah. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. So I think that's one thing people are doing wrong when they uh, just completely have the form wrong. Dude, you do not know how hard it is for me to go to like Quartz Plus and see people rowing and bite my tongue. <laughs> I just want to go, just over, there, back, go, wrong, go over there and just wrong, grab the handle. Wrong. Just get, just get, just get off. Just stop. <laughs> I'm sure that'll end well for you. I can't watch this any longer. Next week in the forum, local man banned from Courts Plus. <laughs> well, and it's usually kids just for aggressive thinking, behavior. It's usually kids just thinking they have to put the dampener all the way up to ten and just crank as hard as they possibly can with their <laughs> arms. Funny. And I will go like this and just do it right and just <sighs> just. Just form. big, huge pulls yep. and like lap them. Yep. Okay. So let's talk about the metrics. Okay. So here's where he says the vast majority of rowers will set the screen to track their 500 meter split or just simply split. That's what you're talking about. That's yep. kind of like your standardized time. It's your, yeah. What's your 500? Okay. So, so that's how quickly can you get to the 500 meters? Correct. So if I told you, you said, what should I do for a row workout when your, your rower shows up? I yep. would say... Do 10 intervals. Oh, it's of, been in the corner of the room for about three months. Are you shitting me? Except, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Do stuff that makes you uncomfortable, <laughs> damn it. So so what I would tell you is I would say do 10 <laughs> intervals at 155. And 155 what? See, that's you'll know that. Now you'll know that. 155, 500 meter pace. So at 155, okay. at a minute 55, you'll have gone 500 meters. Oh, okay. So I better get to 500 meters before two minutes is what you're saying. Well, if that's the prescribed, if that's the programmed workout, you can, well, you can make, you can, you can set your interval to whatever, inter, whatever 500 time you, well, pace, that's what I'm saying. whatever What's, pace you want. Okay. So I'll simplify it even more. 
when people say, hey, I just- Dumb, it, dumb that shit down. Okay. I just did intervals on the row. And if I said, oh, good job, what pace? Then you'd tell me 155. So you averaged 155 throughout the 10 intervals. Oh, okay. Or I just did 5,000 meters. What pace? 155, 150, 145, 205, whatever. Um, so what you're, it's kind of like saying how many miles per hour. Were exactly. You it's, it's just okay. you set your base. And then you're going to want to do a 500-meter <clears throat> max effort all out as fast as you possibly can. Just to see can. what your sprint your sprint is. 500, to create that baseline. Okay. Because then some workouts will u- make you use that baseline like 50% of and your- And that's kind of like your one rep max exactly. on benching or whatever. Okay. Bingo. Yeah, that makes sense. So, <clears throat> and there's actually, if you go to the Concept2 Row website, mm-hmm. they actually have a chart from where you should be. Let's find it. And as far as um, do Concept2 Rower records. Is it and then, like I, I? No. You had it. It's two right after the T. Where we're... Oh, it's the actual... No, see where it's finishing? Yeah, never mind. <laughs> um, there. Into a rower pace chart. Sure. Boom. Right there. So on the left, average per 500 meters. And average just, pace. Okay, yep, yep. And it just lists the numbers. Got it. So. Okay. Yeah, so I'll put the... I'll put a link to this. So there's a... Um, like you, like with your chin ups, there's mm-hmm. a chart. Yep, and it says what your 500 max effort is. Um, yeah, this is all new to me. Interesting. Okay, so mine. Guess what mine is. <clears throat> it, it's good. Otherwise, I wouldn't be bringing it up. <laughs> of course. <laughs> guess my bench. Guess my bench. Well, you can go. You can go. <laughs> they, they have an actual like um, where you should be to be good, elite, whatever. 120. 123. Ah, that was close. All right. And that right there says everything about <laughs> your experience level. Right. Because if, if I was standing in an airport and I saw you had CrossFit shoes on, and then the dude said, <laughs> what's your 500 meter? And yeah. I said 123. You'd go, holy fuck. Okay. So it's pretty elite then. It's fast, but it's one of the very few things I can do well. <laughs> right. Well, I've, and I think guys that, are, guys that are kind of – that's where like bigger guys have the advantage because like it's little inertia pulling them. Yeah, way exactly. Back. That's yeah. why Sean Baker is a is world class. Bingo, exactly. Because he's a giant beast. Right. We should look. I wonder. What Whereas like he probably is. sucks at pull ups. Look up his five hundred meter. I wonder if we can find it for sure. Talk amongst he's yourselves. He's world class. Okay. Why do scuba divers fall backwards into the ocean? Because if they fell forward, they'd be still be in the boat. Where's this? Sorry, right, done. 114, holy balls. <laughs> no way. Wow. See, that's sick. And, and he's 54 or something. That's so fast. You know why, though? Because every stroke for him, the, the thing is like freaking. Oh, he's like, what, six, he, five? He's generating electricity for his entire town if you hooked it. <laughs> right. That's ridiculous. It oh, my God. I have a new founder And that's on the Concept2 site, too, so that's legit. Yeah. Crazy. Well, you, I mean, they're Wi-Fi, so you can share your screen. That's insane. Right, and he's free in his mid-50s. Mind blown. Powered by ribeye, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's, uh took the mystery out of rowing there yeah, for a little bit. Yeah, we spent so. a lot of time on that. Yeah, but well, I like rowing. Yeah, Rowing's yeah. A, a phenomenal workout. That And that's one of the reasons I it spoke to me a little bit. It's like, okay, I hate cardio. I don't want to buy a freaking treadmill again. I had one, and guess what we did? Freaking sold it because never used it. Because you had already had clothes in yours? <laughs> exactly. Right. So I'm like, okay, a rower, I can bang this shit out fairly quick. Full body, you know, oh, cardio. Speak, guess what we got? It was we. Me and Mel. Huh. Well, I don't know. But we, along these same lines, but nowhere part of the cult. <laughs> side by side toilet. No. Peloton. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Is that the bike or the treadmill? That's the bike. Because they do have both now, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, the bike is okay. a flop. That's why there's stocks in the toilet, because of that stupid bike or stupid treadmill. Oh, the treadmill flop. People were dying. <laughs> it was like dying. <laughs> it was like going too fast and throwing people off or some shit. <laughs> yeah, you know, people die in your product. 
your stock's going to pay. Not, not going to help you. Nope. <laughs> nope. Okay, well, let's move into our topic for the day. What is it? Is, I forgot. I'm still fixated on that 114.6. What's the best time of day to train? Okay, no. What, Depends. Right. Depends on who and you are. This is always subjective. And, of course, it always – it depends. It depends. Yes, we know that. But we're going to give some guidelines and just – have a discussion on it. There is a scientific, and like when you and I chatted earlier today, as a matter of fact, I said there is, like HGH is higher in the morning. Yeah, there is some. There's some science supporting the morning workout. One thing I found in my research here was most world records are set during a certain time. Oh. So you know, that that kind of shocked me a little. Sure. And we'll, we'll get to when that was coming up here. But the reason that this discussion came up was because – I work out 100% because of when it's available, you know, when I have the time. So it's around my lifestyle, kid, young kids and job and everything else. So that's what dictates my time. So it might not be optimal as far as, you know, my circadian rhythms and my hormones and everything else. But it's also not your job. No, exactly. So I mean, if I was trying to hit world records, I'd be doing it when like it was. 114.6. Yeah, I mean, right. <laughs> if I was trying to hit Sean Baker numbers, I'd be doing it at a certain time of day for maximum results. But for me, it's just important. The consistency is what's important. So I have to do it at a time when it's available. And for me, that's after the kids go to bed. So like 9 p.m. every night, I can go down to my home gym, which I have nicely set up, and bang it out in like 45 minutes. Right. Don't have to drive anywhere. For me, that works. And I'm able to do it consistently because of how I have it set up. Is it ideal? I don't know. It's not. Um, Working out before bed at the time is not. not. It's not. <laughs> he just and, shoots it down. And no. I, and I do you it in the- stop. I do it in the late <laughs> afternoon, early evening too, and that's not ideal. Well, have you heard about the people that wake and bake? You know, like they get up at 4 a.m. and go to the gym before they go to work? Yeah. There's those people too. Psycho. Um, I, I say working out before 9 o'clock is a mental illness. <laughs> Right, but some people they're just hardcore, and their their attitude That's, is, "I'm gonna if I don't get do it, then I'm not gonna do it." Exactly. So I just got to get up and do it. <laughs> but to remember the time when last week when I thought I saw Jesus. <laughs> yep. You can't work out like that and go to work. Oh, because you're just wrecked. I need a couple of hours. Oh yeah. I could. I would be a pile of shit. Yeah. If I went to work after that, <laughs> I just my head would just lay on the desk. <laughs> right. I'm like. I mean, I'm like this shaking. I right. couldn't write. I couldn't type. Yeah, that's that's true. Like I'm a mess. If you're going super hard too, then that you got to take that into consideration. Mm -hmm. What are you going to be doing after? Right. Yeah. And then Most there's people athletes that, eat. Right. Do a sauna or take a hot tub or there's get that. A, Giant, get a massage. Giant ice pool. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and then there's people that do it over lunch break, too. I've like, done that a couple of those times people have always out like, of necessity. That seems the most annoying way to ever work out because you have to leave your job. You got to bring a change of clothes. You know, you got to go there. You got to work out. You got to shower. You got to change back in. Your, it seems like a two-hour, two-and-a-half-hour endeavor minimum. It's two, it's two for sure. Hour and a half, two. Depends on how far away you work from the gym. Yeah, I mean, that, that just seems like – but. Again, if that's the only time they can do it and they can fit it in, by far, by far the most important thing above all else is are you doing it X amount of times a week? Right. Consistency and volume. I don't care if you wake up at four, 3 a.m., midnight, whatever. If you're doing it and that's when you can get it done, that's all that matters. So fit it in whenever you can. That's the bottom line. But if you have some flexibility, like if you could do it before work, after work, during lunch, in the evening, if you have flexibility to put it any one of those times, is one of those times better than the other? That's really what's... And the answer is yes. The, and the answer is scientifically yes. Um, so i got a couple articles here. So one, the first thing they talk about is circadian rhythm. So that's our natural uh, wake and sleep cycle that our, our uh, body falls into and just out of routine. And that's why when you fly to a different time zone, you get jet lag because even though you'd normally would go to bed or your body thinks, Hey, it's bedtime. Even if it's like 4 PM, just cause you're in England or whatever. And, uh, or you stay up late because you know, you're not ready to go to sleep yet. Your body is used to waking and sleeping at a certain time. And it takes a long time to adjust those. So because of that, um, hormone levels are regulated during the day to help with that cycle. Like, and it shows here in this graph, which is pretty informative. Let me make this bigger. So it talks about, okay, midnight, 
Okay, your deepest, well, here, let's just start right before you wake up. Okay, lowest body temperature, 4.30 a.m. Sharpest rise in blood pressure, 6.45. Melatonin secretion stops, 7.30 a.m. Bowel movement likely, (laughs) 8.30 a.m. Highest testosterone secretion, 9. High alertness, 10 a.m. Noon, okay. The best coordination, 2.30. 14.30, or as the military guy says, he knew right away what that was. I had to do the math. Oh. <laughs> 2.30. Fastest reaction time, 3.30. Greatest cardiovascular efficiency and muscle strength, and I work 5. Out, I work out at 4 to 5. Highest blood pressure, 6.30. Highest body temperature, 7. And 21, which is what 9 p.m., right? <laughs> Melatonin <laughs> secretion starts. 22.30, so that's 10.30. Mm-hmm. Bowel movements suppressed, I suppose, because you don't have to wake up in the middle of the night to take a crap, right? Yep. So as you can see, your hormones are have this cycle throughout the day in order basically to make sure you get the most sleep and the most productive sleep. So if you're fighting that by trying to work out when your body's secreting a bunch of melatonin, you know. Yeah. Then you're That's fighting tough. your body's urge to fall asleep. Exactly. But for me, I'm doing that at six. Fighting it, fighting the urge to fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> A.M. Well, that's that's where. Oh, oh right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, but I would the highest the highest testosterone, highest alertness. When I do my row intervals, are usually around ten, ten thirty. I I would completely agree with that. Yeah. And here's the other thing: like we talked about, on being on the couch versus doing the push mower, it's marginal. I'm guessing the gain you see by working out at 4 p.m. versus doing it at 8 a.m. is not insane. Right. You know, it's not going to be like, hey, I look like Arnold if I just were to work out at 4. <laughs> right. But instead, I look like Steve Buscemi because I worked out at 6 a.m. I mean, yep. it's not going to. No, it works. It's not going to affect it that much. Right. But if you have the fl- if you have the flexibility, wh- why would you want to take advantage of the sure. prime, prime time? So. It says here, as you can see, fluctuations throughout the day may have an impact on our performance levels and influence the hormonal concentrations around training. Although some data suggests that training in the early evening may provide the greatest force and muscle strength, it's not always as black and white as that. So it talks about muscular performance. So that's really like if you're trying to actually do something, you know, if you're trying to move right. some, something, uh, that's the best time is the late afternoon. Um and it talks about the uh, hormones, so the t- testosterone, cortisol, growth hormone. Now, you mentioned that the growth hormone was was strongest at what time? In the morning. In the morning, yep. So it talks about all that. So here's, okay. It says, however, this normal rhythm can be altered depending on your lifestyle, sleep, and daily activity. One important consideration is that testosterone levels normally increase after exercise, and the rise in testosterone after exercise appears to be more profound in the evening than it is in the morning. Okay. Okay, here, here's one you were talking about. Growth hormone is another muscle-building hormone. Normally, the majority of GH is released in pulses when you sleep, with the largest pulses occurring before midnight and some smaller pulses early in the morning. As with testosterone, intense exercise acutely elevates growth hormone levels, providing spikes post-workout and altering our body's normal pattern at night. Well, that's good. I mean, that's, where we, that's the whole point, right? Right. <laughs> Adaptation. Yeah, you want it to go, holy shit, I need to make some more of this muscle tissue. Right. Okay, so here's the bottom line. Is there actually a best time to train? Only a few research studies have examined the relationship between training at different times and muscle growth. The most supportive evidence came from a 10-week training study where the subjects were assigned to either a morning 7 to 9 a.m. or afternoon 5 to 7 p.m. training group, both following the exact same training routine. Researchers found that the afternoon group experienced a 3.5% increase in muscle size. Uh, That's not nothing. No. Yeah, that's something. So I guess if you have the choice, better to exercise in the afternoon, early evening, than the morning. And that would suggest what that that little clock chart they had. Yeah, right. And with your performance levels being the highest at that point. Right. And it makes sense because then that, that means you're going to push the most weight, which means you're going to cause the most adaptation of the muscle and the most minor tearing. Right. Um, so... I just realized I didn't have this up. Oh. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll post this article so everybody can follow along here. But yeah, so here's the chart where I talked about the the control group, which I guess was people that didn't 
exercise. Um, no, they just mowed their lawn. <laughs> right, on the rider. And then, uh, yeah, so 3.5% increase in muscle size. Oh, but it says versus 2.7 in the morning group. Okay, so it's really just a 0.8% right. between the two groups. I guess the this would be over not exercising, which would be the control. Sure. Okay, that makes sense. So. Bottom line, just do it. Well, yeah, bottom line is get out there and exercise. But Nothing's it, more important than consistency in your training and sleep. Yep. Okay, so here's another one, another article. The best time to work out, there's a science to it. Okay. Here's another 24-week period study. They did morning and evenings too. Well, strength and endurance performed similarly across the groups. The men training in the evening gained noticeably more muscle mass. Okay. So same results, basically. So if you have a choice, it seems like working out in the evening, all things being equal, is going to be give you better results. So, but it's all, so far it's all it's been all strength, right? Well, that was actually muscle size on the last one, right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it wasn't necessarily cardiovascular. Yeah, it wasn't like can you run faster necessarily? Right. Just muscle building is what they're referencing here. So, and I'm interested in fitness. Yep. Yeah, I wonder if people have done the card the cardio version of this. Not sure. On I think my cardio is better in the morning, just because I'm fasted, right? And you do cardio better when you're not bulging at the belly button full of shit because your body's not dedicating a ton of processes to digestion. Well, right, and yeah. you just when you get that if you work really hard, you get that queasy feeling. You don't get sick to your stomach because it's full of food. Yeah, exactly. All right, so <clears throat> that's that. Um, so, I mean, I think people use the time of day thing as an excuse too. Oh, one hundred percent, without right? a doubt. They yep. just will say, "Well, you know, uh, there's no way I can get there over lunch." Well, true, maybe not, but if you really wanted to, you could. So, what would happen to those people? And I'm curious. I'm I'm honestly asking. So, what would happen if you walked in? And you're my boss, and I know. Hey, Josh, you got him. You'll fly Ed. You got. Thank God, I can work out all day now. <laughs> so, got a minute? I want to talk to you about my fitness and my wellness, my yeah. health and my wellness. What my... a donut! They just came from Sandy's. Yeah, exactly. No, you <laughs> eat it. You were going to anyways. Um, way to make me. Way to shame me. Yep. Yeah. Just telling you the truth. Me. Just telling the truth. <laughs> I'm not going to show your coat it because you'll eat that too. <laughs> Um, no, but in all serious, my, I'm worried about my mental health, my physical health and my overall well-being. And do you mind? It's because of Larry, I, isn't it? If I take an extra 45 minutes at lunch and I'll come in an extra 45 minutes early or stay 45 minutes late, but I'll make up the time either way. And I'll make sure that everything's taken care of and everyone's covered and blah, 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 all that bullshit, whatever your job you have. How many people have that conversation and that has a boss that goes, fuck No. <laughs> I don't care. Even, I want you, you're going to die at that desk. Not even an option, yeah. Right. Nobody's had the conversation. Well, they just but, assume that the boss is going to say no. Right. Most people would never even think to bring it up. Right. Or they'll just sneak out when they can and go work out. Right. But not. I'm pretty forthcoming with my employer, and I tell them that I love working here. I love the job. I love the company. But I only have one body, mm -hmm. and this is just a job. Yep. There, there are other jobs. Oh yeah, um, I'm, I'm pretty blunt about it. Yep, that's what I, one thing I used to always tell when I would train work studies in IT, and they would have to go out and get their first gig. Oh, I would say, remember, as an employer, they're just as desperate, right, as you are. So right. don't go in there acting like hat in hand, like well, please, no, because it's 1947. Yeah, please, sir, I'll take whatever wage you feel is appropriate. <laughs> right. Right. It's like, no, you, you, you have the power as an employee. hundred percent. To, you know, uh, assuming you're not a complete worthless piece of crap. Well, you have to be, you have <laughs> to have a, you have to bring value to the, right. to the relationship. Yeah. But if, if you have that, understand that, you know, you're worth X amount and don't just take the first offer. 
Because most people are just like, oh, thank God they gave me the job. It's right. Like, oh. I just wanted a job. Oh. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not. I'm going to go drink. So we're, when you're talking about, yeah, when you're talking about health, you know, asking for uh, special allocations for longer lunch for working out, I mean, they should see that as, holy shit, this guy's like actually wants to take care of himself. And be and better. Be, and maybe he'll be around longer and more mentally capable and, right. you know, better representative but of then, the company. But then when you do That's that. That's if they buy into it themselves. Though. Right. But then when you do that, don't be the guy that's fucking hitting the light switch at 459. Right. Probably let your boss see you grinding away at 520. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you can't, you can't say, I'm going to make up the 45 and then not make up the 45. Right. Exactly. I mean, you have to live up to your end of the bargain. Mm-hmm. If you're and, even, and, and then just as advice, if anyone's going to try and do this at their job, which you should, um, in the beginning, for the first ninety days or so, few few months at least, give back more than forty five. Right. Well, that and that should just be a rule, anyways. Right. And well, I don't think so. It still should be equitable. Well, too many employers are take 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 take. Well, what I always tell people when I said when you go in there for the first six months, you know that's when they're going to establish their opinion of you, and then that's going to buy you some grace later on. Right. If you start to you know if you need some. Grace right. for whatever reasons. Right, 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 right. So you know, go in there, be the rock, be a rock star, and then we're like, if something, if you fuck up a year down the road, they go, ah, Josh would never do that. He's a rock star. Or, or, <laughs> or they'd say, yeah, Josh did do that, right. but look what he does. <laughs> yeah, yep. Just exactly. prove your worth. Bring value to the equation. If you bring value to an employer, and I got a, I got an email from our CEO two days ago. Two words, you're fired. Nope, and it said, "Hey, th- this is big wig CEO, right? Like, doesn't even really know my name." <laughs> yeah. He sent me a personalized email the other day on Tuesday when we got back to work, and he said, "Hey, Dwayne, I just want to let you know that I saw the flash review, just a quick flash that came across my desk, and I saw the numbers for Fargo, and to say I'm impressed would be an understatement." He said, "Keep up the good work." And then just put kind regards, Craig. Excellent. I think I can go work out. Yep. <laughs> right. Yeah, did a million dollars in one month for the first time in the company's right. history. I, and, I, I think 45 minutes to go do some CrossFit is. And trust me, guys, selling gas powered dildos is not an easy job. <laughs> oh, well, it is. <laughs> 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 they sell themselves. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, here's the other thing, too. And I don't know if this is a losing proposition if you go in and tell this to your boss, but you're going to be saving the company money if you're in a healthy condition, right? The problem is most managers in the corporate world right now are too much of a micro-level manager that they they can't see that big picture. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if... I don't know if that'll be effective, an effective strategy, but it's true. No, if it's you're true, somebody but, who doesn't utilize hospital care at all, right? I mean, you're the ideal employee as far as you know. And cost. my employer is a perfect example of that because we just got our uh, rate, our height, our health insurance premiums hiked. Mm. Guess why? Because we were using them too much. Right. Just like auto yeah. insurance, you're getting too many accidents. They're going to drop you. No health insur- No health insurance company is going to. Not make a profit, guys. Right. That's so what they're there to we do. We actually used it too much. Right. And then now we found a carrier. The last couple of years we found a carrier. Well, our HR department found a carrier that would actually take us on. And everything went up like 25%. Yeah. Why? Because you used it. Yeah. They're not going to take a loss. Nope. Big big shock. They're, nope. they're in it to make a profit just like every other business. Right. So you would think that an employer would want – like they would see you come in and say, hey, I'm going to work out. I'm going to stay in shape. That's going to result in less utilization of medical uh, costs. And if everyone in the company did that, well, not that the premiums would ever go down because they never go down. But New- they wouldn't go up. Newsflash, they never go down. Which but is, yeah, they're not going to maybe get increased. Right. Or if they will, it's just going to be because the of problem greed with, and the, not because of actual usage. The problem <laughs> most of the time with that direct report supervisor Probably doesn't give a shit. He's probably a fat fuck. As, as so exactly. Anyways. And if you explain it to him how you're going to be a better employee, saving him money in the long run, and he'll be like, yeah, thanks for the 75 cents 14 years from now. Get back to work. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. He just doesn't care. No, exactly. And that's why, like, in Japan, they have, like, calisthenics hour and stuff. Right. You know, they, okay, everybody out to the parking lot. and 
We wonder why we get in our ass. We don't wonder but here why we, we have everything taco to bar. Our reward is taco bar. <laughs> don't even get me started. <laughs> right. All right, guys. We're going to wrap it up there. Um, so whatever, whenever you can work out, do it. That's Make it a priority. Make it a priority. If your job doesn't let you, get a new job. Easy for you to say. Or, no, it's not. It's hard. Or but do do it after work. I don't mean, even don't even t- unless you've had that conversation with your boss. Don't even use an excuse. No, exactly. Or do it after work. I mean, that's or what do, I do it after work. Yeah, or you know, do it fine. really, really, really early. Yep. All right, guys, send us an email to info at fitandfurious.com. What do you want to hear? What questions do you have? Make sure you watch on YouTube to see the valuable visuals and weekly extra content. Audio podcasts are available on Apple, Spotify, Google, anywhere audio podcasts are found. And please subscribe, rate, review, and share. Support the show at FuriousMerch.com. Check out T-shirts. And we will see you next week. I got to go try my rower. Sure you will. Get my 500-meter time.